All right. Well, Chief McMillan, I will hand over the mic um, to you more or less. All right. Can you hear me okay? Take that as a yes. Um, so my name is uh, Josh McMillan. I'm the Chief of Public Safety for the University. Uh, and today we're talking our sessions, uh, Be Safe with Peace Safe. And so uh, the approach I'm going to take is going to be just talking a little bit about Peace Safe, why the university is committed to safety and what we do to reinforce that commitment. And then some programs we have in place, things we have in place, and just some really good information um, that you might need coming to Arkansas Tech to make sure you have what you need to stay safe. And then to make sure everybody's kind of on the same page. And then once I get through that information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to offer uh, an opportunity, like Sabrina said, for questions at the end to make sure everything's covered. So please feel free to ask whatever you want to ask, and we'll make sure that we cover it and get all your questions answered. Are we good? All right. Well, so I'm going to start a little about uh, public safety. So uh, public safety is responsible for the safety and security of the uh, university. And the way we do that is a, a lot of different ways, but the university is committed to your safety and your security because we want to provide the best environment for you to learn because we want you to come to our university, learn a lot, get a great job when you graduate, all that good stuff. But while we're on campus, we want you to feel safe and secure while you're uh, getting your education. And so the University Public Safety is actually a certified law enforcement agency. We employ uh, 20 full-time police officers. They're certified through the state of Arkansas. And so what that means is they're the same arrest powers and authority as any city, county, or state agency. We also have uh, six part-timers that work for us for special events and special things along those lines. Um, and then on the staff, we also have a Office of Emergency Management uh, with our with our department and they're responsible for all the emergency planning making sure everybody's got what they need to stay safe and make sure if something does happen on campus we respond appropriately to make sure we keep people safe while we're here and so what we do is we uh, have a policing philosophy it's called um, community policing uh, if you ever heard that uh, term before it's got a lot of different definitions a lot of way they like to describe it uh, the way I describe it is I just kind of describe it as a relationship approach with the people that we're here to serve so when you come to campus, if you live on campus, you go to class on campus, you're gonna see public safety officers walking through buildings, driving around campus. You're gonna see them when you're out and about, you'll see them in the cafeteria, you're gonna see them in the bookstore, you're gonna see them kind of all over campus just kind of being a presence. And the reason that they're there, it's not because something bad's happened. They basically make it a really good job to make sure that they're present wherever, they're, wherever you're at so that you have a feeling of safety when you're there. And then the other side is, is we try to build relationships with all the students and all the staff and faculty that work here because we know that to have a safe university, everybody kind of has to work together and it's a team effort to make sure that happens. And so through this philosophy of building relationships, our job is just to make sure that you feel comfortable on campus, that you feel safe and that those officers are there to, to help you out with whatever you need and to make sure that you have what you need to be successful. And with that, some of the services we offer to kind of go along with our community policing philosophy is if you come to campus, we do two things that people utilize every week is we do building, I'm sorry, vehicle unlocks and jump starts. So if you come to campus and you end up with your vehicle dead or you lock your keys in the car by accident, we're more than happy to come jump start your vehicle and get you back in that vehicle to get your keys. Uh, we do that every week, multiple times a week. Other things we offer as well is we have some crime prevention programs we do. So when you're at campus, we offer some community programs. We offer a self-defense course. It's a multi-week course we offer to the university. Uh, gives you some tools you might need in case you're ever in a, in a bad situation and need to help them get out of it. Uh, we also offer CPR and AED training. More than happy to get you certified in CPR and AED through the American Heart Saver Association. Other things we offer to the university is we offer our CRACE course, which is our civilian response to active shooter events. So we offer a uh, one hour course to the entire university where you come and learn about responding in, in that situation so that hopefully you give the tools you need to keep yourself safe and maybe some others while you're there as well. Um, one of those events you hope never happens, but we do training on that. We also offer a emergency preparedness training as well to kind of give you some tools for your toolbox, so to speak. If you ever get in trouble, like get lost or anything along those lines to make sure you're prepared to respond to offer yourself a good opportunity to um, to make it through that situation. And the reason we do this is because we have a crime prevention approach and it's kind of twofold. One is you're coming to the university to uh, get an education and our, our goal is for you to successfully get your degree and push on to somewhere else, right? Get that million dollar job and, and have a good time. So with that saying to that, 
what we do is our approach is this, we give you tools through like those programs I talked about, like self-defense, like CPR, Craze Course, and other offerings we do to help keep yourself safe while you're on the university campus. But those classes we also teach are good outside of the university. So if you get a job at a bigger city or wherever you're gonna end up in the future, the tools you learn in our trainings we offer to the university, it also give you tools you need at any type of job or any other area that you go to in the future. So we're excited about that and to offer those things to you. Other things we do, with our crime prevention approach is we also go out and you'll see us at events. We have tabling events. We, you can actually come and talk to us, meet us, get to know us. If you see an officer out and about, like I said earlier, they'll be everywhere on campus. Make sure you wave, say hello. Um, they're more than happy to talk to you and answer any questions you have, especially when you're here for your first few weeks and you're trying to figure out where to go. We give a lot of directions and more than happy to do that. We actually have a very convenient campus map. It's online, but also a printable copy that you can use and helps you get to where you need to go as well. Um, some other things we have going on. I told you earlier, we have a Office of Emergency Management. And so that's just a fancy way to say we have a campus emergency manager. And so what that person does is that person uh, works with our office and we basically plan out emergency response to anything that happens on campus. And one of the things we have with that is the university has what's called emergency notifications. So when you sign up to the university and you put your information in a uh, banner, which is our com fancy computer system, um, it'll take all your information, upload it to your emergency notifications. And what this does is you will get a text, email, phone call. It's got 11 ways to notify you if something bad happens on campus. And that way you know what's going on, what's happening. So one of the most common ones we send, we send out a lot of times is your winter weather closing. So if it snows and the university has to cancel for whatever reason, because the roads aren't safe to drive on, you'll get notified through our emergency notification system. So I would highly advise you to sign up for that. You know, it's everything from severe weather. If there's a serious event that occurs on campus, you'll get, in from, you'll get notified through there. It's anything that poses a, a, a serious threat to the life safety of the university. So the emergency notifications are great. The other thing about them is if your parents or your loved ones or someone that is your guardian, whoever, you would like them to sign up, we actually have on our website a listing of a number they can text their information into. And once they text their information into that, into that, uh, that system, it'll actually notify them when something happens as well. So they too can be informed of what's going on campus and be able to help you out if you need to. The other thing I kind of want to touch on a little bit is because of uh, 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 parking. Um, if you come to campus and you have a car and you want to drive a car, and you want to park on campus, there is a process you have to follow. So that process is you have to get a hang tag or a parking permit. And all that's done online. You go to public safety, go to go to your one tech, and there's a tab to purchase your parking permit. And that uh, parking permit is what you'll need to park on campus throughout the semester. I'd advise you strongly to get one. Uh, it helps out a lot with parking on campus and kind of organizing stuff as well. Um, and what I'll tell you is, is we sell a lot of parking permits, but at the same time, uh, we never have an issue with people finding a place to park. So kind of a fair warning, uh, if you get a parking permit, you come to campus and you can't find a place to park, I'm, I assure you, you will be, it just might not be the most convenient. So the thing about university campus is it's a big, it's a big area. There's a lot of parking on campus, but it's not all by the front door. So sometimes you have to park a little bit off and walk. Uh, we too do that as well, just so you know. Um, I always tell people if you want to get a bike, it's a good investment because you can ride anywhere you want to on campus and be there in like two minutes, any, anywhere on campus, no problem. And we also have a bike patrol, which is super fun. So we, I advise you on that. Uh, if you don't get a parking permit, you might end up with a parking citation. So you appeal those online as well if you'd like to, a lot of stuff like that. Um, so I advise you get your parking permit and basically those go on sale August 1st. And when they go on sale August 1st, just sign up. It comes to the mail. So whatever address you put in put in the system is where it's gonna send it to. So please put an address of where you can get it, All right? That's always helpful. Um, other thing we have as far as you know, as a public safety is concerned is oh, you'll hey, see- Chief. Yes. Um, we actually had a question um, regarding the permit. Does okay. the permit limit you only to one lot or is it good campus wide? So we have a color coding system. So if you live on campus, you get what's called a residence hall parking, par parking permit, which allows you to park in residence hall designated parking. So that'll be orange, blue, or green, depending on which side of the campus you're located. If you're a commuter and you drive into campus, you'll get a yellow hang tag, 
And that yellow hang tag allows you to park pretty much majority of campus around all of our academic buildings as well. Um, permits, I see a question down here. Permits, uh, they cost uh, $45, yeah, sorry. The permit itself costs $45 is what it costs to park, and that's for the entire year. It's August 1st of 2020 all the way to August 15th of 2021. So that's what it costs to park for a year. Um, and they actually go available to sell on August 1st. So after August 1st, you can order your parking permit, have it mailed to you just in time to come to campus for the day. Um, and our color coding system, you'll get a permit, it'll say where it is. Depends if you live on campus or off campus where you're gonna park, but there is designated parking spots. So um, what I always advise people to do is we give a, don't tell anybody this, kind of a secret, that's really not a secret. Uh, we get a small grace period of about a week or so when classes start to kind of get you acclimated because we know people will have some trouble with that. So I always say when you get your permit and you start going to classes, you're gonna to come to the university and kind of hopefully map out where you need to go. When you do that, map out a good parking spot too and map out more than one, maybe about 10 just to make sure you've got some you wanna be able to, right? So through One Tech, August 1st, you can order your parking permit, it'll be good. And if you have any questions, call our office. Our front desk representatives are happy to help, officers are happy to help, anything you need, we're happy to help you with. Just give us a call and see what we can't do. And if you have trouble getting your permit, or if your permit doesn't come in the mail in a timely fashion, or maybe you had it mailed somewhere and then it didn't go where it's supposed to go, or you have some issues, call our office, because we'll give you a temporary permit until your new one gets in. So when you order your permit, you can actually print a temporary permit off on a sheet of paper and then just put that in your dash until your regular permit comes in. And then after that, you can go ahead and uh, when your new permit comes in, just replace that. If you have troubles, just let us know. And we can actually go in the system and find out where it's at. Does that answer y'all's questions on the permits? Um, all right, I don't wanna just keep going to where you fall asleep. It's not my goal here. Okay, good. All right, so other things that I kind of want to talk about a little bit with uh, public safety is we actually have a, a lot of different ways we patrol. So when you come to campus and you're on university, have a good time, you're going to see cops on bikes. Um, so you'll see you out there on bike patrol, she was walking around campus, a lot of foot patrol. And then we got some vehicles, you'll see us as well. You'll also see us at most major sporting events and things on campus as well. I say that just to tell you, we're here to make sure that you're safe and secure while you're here. Um, we're, I encourage you strongly to get to know your public safety officers and they're great people, nice people, and they're, they can give you some good information and we're here to help and make sure you have a good college career. So don't ever worry about that. Also, if you ever do come to campus and you are the victim of a crime, um, we won't tell you how to report crime. So everybody typically knows that you're going to call your, if it's an emergency, you're calling 911. I think we've been shown that since kindergarten, if that's fair. So hopefully we know that number, but we also have an office number of 479-968-0222. So when you come to campus, I always encourage people to program that phone, that number into their phone. That way they have it and they can call us anytime they need something because we do more than just respond to, to calls, calls for service. But if something happens, if someone, the number one problem we have on campus is people stealing, stealing property and that's anywhere in the United States. So if that does happen, just give us a call. We'll help you find it and we'll do our best to get it returned to you. But call that number if you need assistance. Also, if you need assistance with your parking permit or you need assistance with anything as far as campus is concerned and safety issues, you can call us. Um, we also offer that ability to report. And then the other way we ask you to report stuff is, is, uh, is you just call your general 911 number or we have some other offices on campus you can contact as well. And so when you're here, something bad happens, you need some assistance, that's what we're also here for as well. So don't ever hesitate to call us or worry about it. We'll do our best to assist you and do what we need to to help you out. Um, and I say that because I'll say this, we have some programs we take part of on the campus to keep it safe. And one of the programs that we do every year is a campus safety walk. So if you would like to help contribute to the safety of the campus when you're here, we schedule a nightly walk through campus and we let you identify areas of concern. So over the last couple of years, we've been doing this for uh, seven or eight years now, and we've made some drastic improvements on campus from lighting to landscaping to all over campus. And we try to provide you the safest atmosphere to be in at night and during the day. And so people report that stuff and then we as a university get together and we make adjustments to those areas to make sure you feel safe when you're on campus as well. So that's a program we do every year. It's been a great thing that we can offer and we're happy to do that for people. Um, other things you'll do if you come to campus, uh, we have a emergency procedure guide. So 
I'll be honest, I've been talking for like 20 minutes and uh, I don't want to just kind of stop in the middle, but that's a lot of talking for a lot of people. So I'm going to touch on emergency procedures, guy. But if you have any questions, please send them in. I'll make sure that I cover what, you, what needs to be covered. But I also want you to know this is our emergency procedure guide exists to let you know what we as a university are going to do if there's a problem. And it's a green pamphlet you'll see all over campus. Every residence hall room has one. Every classroom has one. Every administration office has one. Also, it's online. And when it's online, it's something that you can just access easy to see what we're going to do. And I really do strongly encourage you to look at that before the emergency happens. So that way, if something does happen, you can kind of know what we're going to do, so you can best plan what you're what what you need to do to keep to help uh, keep yourself safe during during that time. And that covers a a long a laundry list of things that might occur on campus. It's available on our website at Public Safety, and that's something that we have. And it's just feel free to peruse that and get familiar with it. That way, you know what to do if something does happen. And the other thing I'm going to talk about is a Cleary report. So that's my next topic. So do I have any questions real quick before I dive into that? So apparently I'm doing such a fabulous job. We're rocking and rolling here. All right. So the Cleary Report. So here's what's interesting. So the Cleary Report is a great thing. The Cleary Report is how we tell you what we do to keep yourself safe. So everything I've told you exists in a report. So if you like to read, it's a great opportunity for you to read something that's, that's, that's useful. It's called our annual school safety report. And what it is, is back in 1986, a young lady went to a college university and at that call, and when she was at the college university, she was, uh, she was murdered. And at that time, universities weren't required to report crime statistics. It wasn't something that the federal government required. So the family was very upset at this and they petitioned Washington. And when they did, they got it mandated that universities have to report crime statistics so people know what goes on on campus. I personally think that's a great idea. That way you can know how safe a university is of where you're trying to go to school and what's happening. So every university in the United States that receives uh, public funds or federal funds has to report their crime statistics to everybody. And so on any university you're looking at attending, and Arkansas Tech's the best choice, throwing that out there, we have a Cleary report and that clear the annual school safety report entails all the crimes that occur on campus. It also has other things in there as well. It has what to do with emergency notifications. So all that I told you about emergency notifications, numbers, all that stuff that's in there as well. What we do as a police department to keep you safe. It talks about our uh, programs we offer, our crime prevention programs, our programs through our Title IX office. It goes through Jerry Cares, our care team stuff. It also lists a lot of information about Alcohol and Drug Safety Communities Act of 1989. And it just lists a plethora of information there that I think is really valuable for people. I know it's an 84 page report, which turns a lot of people off, but I think that report is vital to help you understand better what we do and our commitment to safety for the university. And just so you know, the clear report mandates that we do certain stuff. And so since we do those certain stuff, we basically are just checking off boxes of things we have to do to provide services to y'all to make sure you're safe when you're on the campus. And so I think it's a great thing because it kind of offers an extra layer of safety that we have to make sure we're providing to keep you safe. And so in my personal opinion, I believe we meet all those requirements and then we go above and beyond those requirements and we actually do more than what's required by the federal government. So I think it's a great idea. And so that's what I want to make sure that you're aware that exists something good for you or your guardian or your parent or whoever's responsible to, to, to peruse, especially when you're trying to decide where to go to college or university. It's just a good thing to know what they're doing there to keep people safe. And that report contains all that information. And with that, are there any questions so far? Good. So we're all feeling safe. Nice. So it's something else to kind of talk about with public safety is, I told y'all earlier, we're a fully functioning police department. We've got 20 full-time officers that work here along with different divisions. So as a law enforcement agency, we have uh, several things. We have patrol officers, which are the ones you'll interact with the most. We have some officers assigned to our detective division. They're responsible for the investigation of crimes that occur on campus. They also do some other stuff. We actually have a crime prevention community policing officer that actually responds to and organizes programs for us and does assessment. And then we have some a nice lady that works the front desk that I answer the phone call and take care of you when you do call. And then from all that stuff, 
I just want you to know that we are a fully functioning law enforcement agency here to provide you protection. So don't ever hesitate to call us if you need something when you're on campus. And I think with that, um, yeah, so the person asked, is there a weapon check for anyone who might want to hunt while they are in school? And so the answer to your question is no. Universities don't actually have any weapon checks. Um, Typically what we find students doing when they want to hunt or do something along those lines, uh, they typically either store it at a, they rent a, a building to store it at like a self storage or they do something with a friend and have an agreement with a friend somewhere off campus. But under law right now, there's no weapons allowed on any university campus in the state of Arkansas. So that does exist, all right? And then we have some information on our website about that as well, as far as concealed carry, enhanced concealed carry and what all that means. So that can explain a lot of those laws to you and help you understand that as well. Right. Are any more questions? Hey, Chief, can you talk about where the public safety office is located? Sure. So we're right by campus. Have y'all, there's a football field, in case you're curious, we have a football team. Um, by the football team is Baswell Hall. That's El Paso. You basically go two tenths of a mile south on El Paso, and you'll be able to go to uh, 716 North El Paso, and that's where we're located. So we're located about two tenths of a mile south of the football field on El Paso. We're actually located behind the Russellville Police Department, uh, which is next to Wendy's off Arkansas, if you're familiar with the city of Russellville at all. Yeah. And then we have, for the question that I just saw about the weapons, there's some policies online. The student handbook is what I would reference for you. So to find out information about weapons or any laws that are gonna affect you as far as the students are concerned, we have policies and procedures located in our student handbook. And so if you go to our, the best way I know how to find it is go to our website at atu.edu, uh, click on tech A to Z and S, and then there'll be a student handbook that pops up. You can pull that up and that's a lot of information about policy procedures on campus. It contains all that information in it for you to peruse and to see what it says, all right? And then also, I guess I should touch on this, if you have a bike and you come to campus, uh, we have a bike registration process in place where you'll register your bike with public safety. And the reason we do this is, is because we wanna make sure that we have your serial number and description of your bike in case it goes missing. It helps us find it a lot, a lot better to have that information on hand. And plus we give you a really fancy green sticker that looks great on your bike. It's tech colors, I'm just saying, it's all the rave. I, I strongly encourage that. Other questions? Chief, can you talk about what types of training that you offer for students? Sure. So for students, I talked about our self-defense class, our CPR AED, and our CRACE course. Uh, we also have on campus what's called a CERT team. So it's the Community Emergency Response Team. And what that is, is we take students that are interested in emergency services, whether it's police, fire, EMS, or anything, and we give you training on things that would be uh, using those job fields. Like for instance, with we do, we do a class on tourniquet usage. We do a class on trauma usage for people that are injured. Uh, we do a class on how to size up a scene if there's ever damage. We also do a class on how to use a radio, which is really exciting. And then we host special events because our department actually partners with the Russellville Police Department, the Pope County EMS, all the emergency services in the area. And we work special events throughout the city on a yearly basis. So we work about four major events and then we actually have students come in and for real world experience, we'll, we'll let them work those events in conjunction with a law enforcement officer or an EMS or a firefighter, depending on what the event is. And so you get to participate in that. We also offer some training um, through the CERT team as far as uh, it's called self-guided training. Basically the CERT team does land searches, rescue, stuff like that with our OEM office. And so that's an opportunity for you to get some real world experience assisting with some life-saving interventions if you decide that's what you want to do. But it's just a good opportunity for anyone interested in the career field. Because when you come to college, you know, it's about trying to find what you might want to do for the rest of your life or kind of do something on those lines. And so we kind of, we strive to give you information that you might need to assist you with that. Um, other things we offer is uh, we offer us, we have student worker positions. If you're looking for a job, we hire student workers to do a variety of roles for us. So one of the roles they fulfill is ticket writers. They go out and issue parking citations. So it's a good way to win friends if you're looking for an opportunity. The other thing we do is we have a student worker that works at night with us with the officers and they're responsible for the unlocks and locks of buildings during the evening time. Um, and then we have student workers that assist us at special events throughout the year as well. So 
we work all your football games, graduations, major events. It's just an opportunity to have a employment when you're on campus if you're looking for a job. Um, those do fill up pretty fast, so they're kind of high demand. People enjoy that a lot, so we, we, we're glad they do. Um, but so we have some jobs there as well. Other programs we offer besides our self-defense CPR and our, our uh, Christ course um, is we offer uh, some classes on like bicycle safety. We do a bike with bike with P-Safe deal throughout the semester. It's kind of fun. Basically, you get with an officer and a bike and we ride around campus and we kind of show you some different aspects of it. Uh, we've been doing the last two years, been doing a ghost tour. So if you like things that are scary or spooky or I, I don't, so I don't go on that, I have someone else that does that. Um, so we have a, a young lady that works for us and she does a, a tour of campus and talks about the ghost stories of Arkansas Tech. It's pretty entertaining and students really like that. Um, so it's a really good tour of campus, kind of see some things you wouldn't normally see. Um, and then we offer some other programs as well along those lines, just some really good stuff. And we publish those throughout the year on our website, special events. We've got a Twitter, social media stuff, which is great. Facebook. I, if you can't tell, I'm not the man for that job. But we have Instagram. I hear that's popular. We have a Twitter and I said a social Facebook. So please feel free to follow us. Uh, and the reason I encourage you to follow that is we do give out good information on that. But the other thing we also give out is if something happens on campus, like severe weather's coming or anything like that, we'll update you through those media fields as well. Right. And then I saw a question, but I apologize. I didn't have time to, to read it. Yeah, so first question is, are there fees for the classes and the trainings that you all offer? Nope, it's included with you coming to our university. So we offer that for you to cost you a dime. So it's, it's through our department. And then the next question is, to be safe from coronavirus, will we practice social distancing and wear masks? How will we be able to do that in a dorm room? Yep. So right now, the university is in the process of doing what's called a recovery framework. So right now, all the, all the areas are writing a recovery plan for the coronavirus and for the COVID-19. And so what we have in place right now is we're doing social distancing. When you come to campus, any campus you attend, but Arkansas Tech in particular, you will see a lot of education information coming out as far as social distancing, what that is, why you want to wear a mask, what that does for you, what we're doing. So what you'll see is you'll see kind of we're doing a reduction in class sizes right now where there's there's only people allowed in a room where you can have six feet or more space between the people in the room to make sure you're safe to help, help with that if you're in a residence hall they'll have things in place they've uh they're limiting the number of people in a room or an area to make sure you can maintain your social distance when you're there we're also uh, asking students to participate in what we call our daily health screen so every day we're asking you before you come to campus to take your temperature do you have a cough are you tired what's what kind of symptoms do you have and we have a whole checklist that you can compare yourself to and if you are exhibiting any of those signs you can call our health and wellness center and they can help you with that information to make sure you get what you need to answer any questions you have related to that and so the goal with our coronavirus uh, response is we're going to educate people teach you how to social distance and what's required on campus have some things set up but as a university we're also setting up areas to make sure when you go to places that only the number of people allowed in that place is what you need to maintain six feet of distance between people when you're there, right? And our classrooms are following that. Our faculty, all our staff are undergoing training currently to get prepared for the return to campus with their all students on campus. And we're gonna provide a really good level of safety and security for people. And then if it does happen that someone is infected and it happens on university, we're gonna do what we need to to make sure that person is isolated and that person gets the help they need to make sure that they're not gonna infect anybody else, but also they can recover in a safe environment too and uh, be able to fully return to class and still be able to manage their, their college schedule as well. So we have all those plans in place. Are there any other questions on that or to answer what you needed? I know that's a, that's a huge topic right now just around the United States in general. And so we are going through the processes to make sure we're safe and that when you come to campus, you'll have the best education experience you can in a health and safety environment, right? And our health and wellness center, just to kind of touch on it, guys, there's some sessions on it. I'd advise you to go to those sessions as well. Um, they've got a great plan in place. It's a great group of people that work there and they are truly committed to making sure you're safe while you're on campus with your health concerns. And so they're putting a lot of plans in place to make sure that that's, that's, that's doable. And our faculty and staff have been great. Okay. Another question? One popped up. 
Yes, that question is, um, so we are having classes in a classroom. I think it was just clarifying. Yeah. Uh, that is our hope um, and we're doing everything we can um, to make that happen safely. So right now the plan is, is we're uh, looking at numbers for classrooms, we're doing that. There will probably be some classes offered online if it's feasible to do that with the professor. Um, if that, for instance, that professor is part of what we consider a vulnerable population, someone that might have had cancer or autoimmune disease or be real susceptible to COVID-19 and their class can be taught online, it might be an online class. But right now, all that's being discussed and academic affairs is doing a lot of work to make sure you, we can, they want to return to in-person classes, which is what we want. Uh, but we also want to make sure you're safe as well and our staff and faculty is safe. So right now, what I'll tell you is, is we are gearing up for in-person classes. Uh, but at the same time, we also know the reality situation is, is some classes will probably be offered online just to make sure the faculty, staff, and the students are safe too. So that is, but a good example is a lab. It's kind of hard to do a chemical experiment at the, at your house, right? Unless it's like one of those old volcanoes with the baking soda and vinegar. We're a little more advanced than that on a university campus most times. So when we do those kind of experiments, we want to make sure they're in a safe area for you to do that, which one of our lab areas as well. But they're all in the process of getting that done. The other thing we're doing is, is our facilities group is making sure that the disinfectant things are being cleaned and sanitized up to the CDC recommendations to make sure that we're keeping water fountains safe, we're keeping everything safe on campus. Hand sanitizer stations are being installed all over campus and a lot of locations to make sure they're filled up so you always have access to that and to make sure that you have the best thing you need to make sure you're clean and safe and then they're going through cleaning doorknobs multiple times a day to help with that. Res Life is doing exactly the same. So there's a lot of processes being put in place right now to make sure we have a clean and healthy environment for you when you come back to campus. So, and once again, that's a national discussion. So every university is going through the same process right now. Other questions? I drink a lot of coffee because it helps me function. So, yeah. we reference the Health and Wellness Center session. So, I shared um, that they're hosting their session on Wednesday at 4 p.m. Yeah. And that way, if y'all want to join that. And I would highly recommend you join that session because it'll be a great opportunity. All right, well, any other final questions for Chief McMillan? Question is, do you feel informed? <laughs> All right, so I'll just offer this to y'all real fast in closing is, you know, public safety, we've always been that, that agency on campus and our, our job is to make sure you're safe and secure. And the only way to do that is with a true partnership with our university campus. So we strive for that every day with our community policing philosophy, with our crime prevention approach. And our goal is just to give you what you need to be safe and secure when you're on campus. Because ultimately, we want you to have a great time when you're here, have a great college experience, great educational experience. And we want you to get those skills you need to be successful in life. And so that's how we kind of pull out of our stuff. And so I hope that you never hesitate to give us a call if you ever need assistance. And if for some reason you have questions or need anything at all, don't ever hesitate to call our office. You can ask to speak to me directly. I'm more than happy to help or assist in anything that you have. And the other thing is, is our officers are here as well. And so we've got a great staff, a great team here, and we all want to see you be successful. So ATU is a great place. It's a great institution. There's a lot of wonderful people that work here. I think you'll find our professors and our faculty and our staff are second. None. And so I really would, uh, I really would, I really would uh, offer to, for you to get with them, meet with them and just have, just know that you're gonna have a great time when you come to the university. So, and like I said, our door is always open. Feel free to call us about anything you need, no matter what it is. We can talk about oranges, whatever, or parking. We're flexible like that. All right. So thank you all for your time. Anything else, Ms. Sabrina? No, that is it. Um, I did want to just put in a little plug for our new app um, that we're launching soon. And um, it's the GoTo ATU app. Um, and we'll be sending out more information about that um, at the close of this week. So I just wanted to give a little teaser teaser for that. So 
So thank you so much, Chief, uh, for joining us and sharing everything um, that you and your team are doing um, to keep our campus safe. So we really appreciate everything that y'all do. Well, I appreciate all y'all's time today and your interest in the university. Thank you for coming to this session. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Well, y'all have a great day.